Hey everybody, I am Coach Peggy Wilms and I am the All Things Wellness Coach. But more importantly, you are here on Coach Peggy Real Time and each week you're going to want to come back. Why? Because you're going to watch this amazing cast who are so brave and on their journey in the biggest, most public forum possible and you're going to be able to witness their growth and you're going to connect with them. That simple you're going to connect with their self-discovery. And if you're showing up thinking I'm going to give you an exercise plan or a nutrition plan or tell you exactly what to do when you sit down with a certain document, I'm not the girl for you. And they're realizing that too. So as you watch, each week you're going to see me give some assignments and some maybe commitments at the end of each show. And you, I want you to absolutely go off and do them too. You're going to see them also Participate in real time community. The Coach Peggy real time community out there on Facebook. Join them and let's talk back and forth. All right, why am I the All Things Wellness Coach? Because for over 30 years, I have been a certified personal trainer, sports performance nutritionist, and I'm a certified health, wellness, and life coach. I also worked in corporate America for 25 years as a corporate wellness coordinator. What does that mean? What the hell is that? I know employees and I knew leadership and I made them talk. How do employees need to feel, sleep, really communicate and stay the healthiest they possibly can. I worked in academia. I also worked with military soldiers and their dependents. My point with all this, I know people. And because I've done this for a few hot minutes, I get passionate and I might yell and scream and I might cuss, but you know what? It's coming from the heart and damn it, Damn it, you need to come back each week because I want you to fall in love with these guys <laughs> and I want to make a difference in your life too. So I hope to see you each week, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Coach Peggy Real Time. guys already dove into the quadrants of the all things wellness wheel which we're going to chat about um, you talked about we did some relationships time management growth personal growth nutrition exercise Amy got sick so we're pulling up the medical quadrant did you go to the doctor no you just I, if, if I'm not feeling better tomorrow if I'm still doing everything I'm doing this week tomorrow yeah, urgent care is going to be expecting a call from me. <laughs> okay, you guys might lose some people along the way because they're just not in the exact same spot. It might also make you want to just go, do I share where I am with anybody? Do I just keep it to my, you know, what do I do? That's why last week we talked about finding your super fans. Anybody that can support you, you lean into them, spend more time with them. And the ones who just aren't quite catching on right now, it's okay. I mean, we don't have to, like, bury them. <laughs> Unless we want to. <laughs> but we want to just kind of set them aside a little bit. Let's start with you, Walt. What did you learn this week? Kind of heavy hitters, ahas. Um, I think the biggest thing was, I have a friend of mine I haven't seen in a few years, came to town to visit, and... He and his friend wanted to go to their favorite pizza place when they used to live here. So I've been to that place many times over the years, and they have things other than pizza. So I thought, no problem. I'll be able to get some kind of chicken dish or something because pizza is not where I need right now. No problem. When I get there, the only thing they're serving is pizza because they have limited kitchen because of the pandemic. So nothing else on the menu. So I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't because I didn't do the follow through. I didn't do what I needed to do to make sure I was prepared. So I get there and I'm stuck. Yep. So when we were going back and forth on the Facebook site, what was the main thing that you learned your takeaway when you're getting ready to go into a situation like that you might do in the future a little bit differently? Just don't assume. That's great. You know, verify what you think is correct. 
Verify up the menu maybe or something. Yeah. Get, get, or yeah. call them. Just call them. Say, hey, you still are there any things I need to know about before we come? You know, any anything that's not on the menu, or do you are you still serving the same menu? Because I did look on their website after we got home. And it mentioned nothing about it. Right, 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 right. Well, and the other thing, if you're going to go out, if you guys are really buttoning up, and so like for now, you guys kind of got a video from me that, you know, Christine luckily kept listening because she really wanted to say, shut up, bitch. She was mad at me. <laughs> but I love that. Um, one of the things that I had said as a comment is to, when you know you're going to get in a situation like that, the holidays are a great example of this, is to get prepared the day before, the day of, and the day after. Because often if you can move a little bit more before, during, and after, or pound some protein if you know you're going to a super tempting place where you might be standing around a buffet table so we can kind of... We got this next time though, Captain America. Absolutely. Christine, what was kind of a big aha for you this last week? The aha... Well, I had sort of two. The first one was the... Yes. The... Um, what makes you fall on and off? Mm -hmm. That was an aha moment mm -hmm. for me that what makes me fall on and off is kind of like people with mental illness. They stop taking their medicine because they think they're cured. And I fall off my health practices because I get to a certain point where I'm in a great spot. And then I know that my family needs me or other people need me. And so I am cured. So it's okay. I can stop what I'm doing for a while to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I and love that. Aha is you can't stop taking the medicine. Right. Right. No, you can't. There's, there's no cure to wellness. You guys, it's constant little tiny battles, but we're not going to win the war, which we're just not, it's got to keep, keep going. But I love that. So when somebody has got mental health issues and they start on their medicine, and they start feeling better. You guys, what's the first thing that any of us do? Oh, Hey, don't need that right. anymore. When that's exactly what we should keep potentially doing. So that was an amazing analogy. I love that. When we talked last week about being lonely and kind of being hunkered down that honestly, if you don't turn on the TV, which we're going to talk about you losing your TV boyfriend this week a little bit, you guys don't know we reduced screen time. We're going to go over some of those things that these guys did this week. So anybody can, that wants to try this can play along. How was your integrity this last week? I really want to touch base because you can lie to me and lie to everybody else, but did you catch yourself kind of fibbing to yourself? How, how did you guys do? Anybody want to say how they did with integrity? I caught myself not following the commitment we made at the end of last week about daily movement exercise type stuff. So day three of the week, I realized, uh oh, I didn't do anything day one or day two. The hell you do? I've done everything since then. Okay, last week, this is what we one of the very first things that we did when we talked about relationships. Okay, we talked about doing a letter, or we talked about if you wanted to email or give someone a buzz. And Christine, let's go through this because you guys had some really heavy hitter, you know, situations that came up. So let's go around the room. You start first. The point was when you reach out is if it takes some weight off in some of that churning story to help you how to go for you it did i mean it was it was sad it, it's a close family member it was sad there was uh, i think there was disappointment there was betrayal maybe on both sides mm -hmm. um and we didn't talk about it for years yeah, um forever. i think i've always had that like a little elf on my shoulder a little yeah. And so when I, when I made the call, I, ju I just explained that the reason I don't go visit or I don't call except for twice a year isn't, isn't that I dislike that person. I actually love the person. I just felt it was not good for my mental health. And I didn't think it was good for her mental health either if I pretended that everything was okay, but I didn't know how to say that it wasn't. Did it take some weight off your shoulder? Do you feel a little bit better? It's it so did. Important, so important. It did. And and she called me two days later. And I thought when I saw the number, I just thought, oh, no. Here we, part two. Bam. You're out of here. The war. <laughs> no, that's okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but she, nope. She wanted to say that she had thought about it and she thought that I was right. And yes, she was disappointed by my, by something that I had yeah. done. Yeah. And unconditional love was something yeah. that I didn't receive. And she said that I was right. And that if she could do it over, she would say, mm -hmm. you disappointed me, but mm -hmm. I still love you. 
So important, those dang so, words. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. So I think, you know, maybe we'll be able to get back. As a friend of mine that I used to work with, and we used to be really tight, and then just one day he just cut me off. And I think it was because something I put on Facebook, you know, expressed a political opinion that I had no idea was so offensive to him. Yeah. And it's been over a year ago. And I was just shocked. I mean, I tried to call him. He, he responded back to my Facebook comment when it happened. And I tried to call him and he cussed me out and he just hung up on me and told him, don't ever call again. I'm like, did he ever tell you why at that time? Or you just didn't know till you reached back out this last week? I really didn't understand why until I reached out this week. Good you know, I, I, I assumed I was obviously about a post I had and I wasn't even nasty to the other person I was speaking about in the post and with the other party. Um, it was just something I can't believe he took the way he did. He did, because it wasn't meant that way at all. And Amy, yours was a very interesting story when you reached out to your person. My person is dead. <laughs> so um, what I did was I wrote a letter. Um, I listened to your video, you know, and, and you said to write a letter. It could be a sentence. It could be eight pages long. Um, read it what you need to do and then read it again later and burn it, bury it, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> so, um, I'm old <laughs> and my mom's, uh, it was my mom that's dead. And uh, she was, you know, I guess I should say she's a thorn in my side. All right, you guys, this last week, we did something that um, you're gonna read in every study that people tell you to do, but, hmm. I don't know how well we really do it, and that's reducing screen time by 50%. Because in the last episode, Amy has, you know, TV is her best friend. And so we reduced it this week, and I want to know what you learned from reducing it. Amy, I'm going to come right back at you. Okay. Um... My boyfriend is back, and you're going to be in trouble. Hey, la, de, la, my boyfriend is back. I, well, this week, it was kind of a cheat week because I was sick and I was in bed. You know where I'm going with that, guys. I'm just gonna shut up and let her keep going, right? Cheat week. It was a cheat week. It was a cheat week. You so weren't feeling well either. I wasn't that's feeling different. well, that's my cheat thing. So I didn't watch TV. I mean, it's just, I mean, I had the music playing while I was training. But, you did um, great though. So you're saying that you didn't hunker down on the couch and still continue to watch your eight hours a day? Yeah. So you didn't have. A, I don't. I want to change. I want to challenge you about the cheat word. What you did is self care. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know if we don't track it. So typically what we want to do is just like you guys did is track how much you are watching because we don't have a clue. When people have to write down 8.30 at night to 1.30 in the morning and then they're like, whoa, because some people will say, well, yeah, I was watching TV, but you know, I really wasn't watching it. I was relaxing. Well, no, you're, you're watching it. So I had you handhold my wellness log, which has a lot of components, but I didn't make it if you did do it, I didn't make it super heavy this week. You didn't have to track macronutrients or micronutrients or anything. But on there, it has all sorts of things like sleep and emotion. But I said, I want you to write down your food. A couple of you then reached out to me and said, hey, I'm doing my fitness pal, which hands up is fantastic. Awesome. And then we can share it with Coach Peggy. Another step. That's a really good anchor. Why do you think that, and I... It's awesome that you did both. Why do you think that I wanted you to do the paper trail, the handhold thing? So you can read it, go back and say, oh my gosh, I really ate all that? That's right. That's right. And the one place I'm going to head and, and tell you guys just a little tip ahead of time, if you guys do this and you have that hand log I gave you and it's printed on both sides and you have it in your binder and you have it three hole punched or whatever, it's going to be different than just my fitness pal. And let me tell you why. Because when you track those foods and you start tracking your sleep, Walt, we're going to talk about your sleep, which, oh my God, you, whoa. But you're tracking your sleep and then down here you've got some emotions and you're doing this. This is the difference. 
When you have that document and you lay it out seven days, which you cannot do handheld with my fitness pal. When you lay this out and you look at day three and you're like, whoa, I was depressed. I sat on the couch. I didn't sleep at all. Oh my God. Oh my, you can go back the day before and the day before that. And almost always you either didn't eat enough or you ate a shit ton of carbs. Well, what's going on this week? Oh, my, I was shocked that, well, not shocked, but I, I gave a pound back on pizza night when I ate the pizza. I ate bread, which I know is bad. I, you know, and the stuff that's on pizza is ultra high sodium. I know that. Prior to that, through the week, I'd lost six pounds, which is good. I, my issues are not really food. I've been on a, a plan and a program for over a year that's doing really well. No. It's something else that goes with it. What? <laughs> It's Bullshit not, that it's not food. Bullshit button. Beep, beep. It's eating at the wrong time, even if it's the right food. Eat, but at the wrong time, and I had some of that this week. Okay, what else? Um, it is not eating the right mix of protein, carb, fat, healthy fat. It's and it's portions often. It's looking at the condiments. It's those to not weigh. Sometimes we have to go back and weigh stuff. We have to really look at it. Okay, Christine, what about you? How'd you do on that side of the goals? I lost um, six pounds total this week, but then I sabotaged myself and gained a pound back. <laughs> but to but, negate, to negate what yeah, you said, I'm like, the yeah. Chinese was worth it. <laughs> And you're still down. You didn't have that I gained one emotional thing. Because remember, we talked about the scales don't have an emotion. So we need to get rid of the emotion that we have with it. It's just data. So yeah. you guys did a great job on this this week. Walt, are you willing to share? Sure. Or uh, I had six pounds lost between Monday and Thursday. I gave one back on Friday with the pizza. And this morning I got it back. So I'm at six pounds for the week. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I mean, seriously, the group, you guys are like 17, 16, 17 pounds. And it's not all about the weight loss. I want to be so clear that when we have our healthy habits and we do self-care, relationships, organization, and we look at our whole life, whatever is supposed to happen, for instance, if you wanted to gain strength and you're doing these things, you will gain strength. If you're anorexic or bulimic and you're doing these things and you're taking care of yourself, you will put on the weight. If by chance it is weight loss, the weight's gonna come off automatically because you're doing these good habits. All right, so let's talk about um, non-weight loss goals. So you guys had goals that you have set up for this series and or life. We did a three month, six month, one year. So Christine, are you on track to kind of baby stepping towards that big goal? What's that goal for you? Mine was mental health. My, my big goal was, have a blog or write a book that was my big off the wall goal <laughs> off the wall it's gonna happen i know but it's just like you i just made that pronouncement my goal is you went public i walk oh <laughs> Ow, that is so good we love to go public <laughs> because now you're hooked right you definitely right. have that desire you've had it okay yes i have that good job Okay, well, what about you? Your non-weight loss goal, talk to me. Number one, better sleep. Talk to us about your sleep. You guys did great job coaching uh, each other on this one. Okay, sleep sucks for all. I find it's absolutely no coincidence that when you do those things that make you heal, such as calling my friend, that, that night I went to bed after the phone call feeling good for a change and slept six hours straight uninterrupted which hasn't happened in a long long time and you know what else i want to so this is why we do this we do the recap thing because sometimes often you guys will forget where to give yourself kudos or the little changes that you made that make a big difference with you guys having completed the chronotype so dr bruce's chronotype test which is your sleep patterns you guys are all bears and so remember bears like their sleep they like their seven to eight hours of sleep so, and bears like to play with people, which is quality time, hang out. They like to eat their snacks and food, mm, delish. But sleep is huge for a bear. Sleep cycle, huge. How would you coach them and demand them through it and be a badass? A beast. A beast. It would be the real life 
real people, real problems, like my stove dying today, and I had to go clean that. So, the coldest day this winter, and our stove is plugged up. So, that's fighting to keep the house at a halfway decent degree. So, we're out here in a below zero wind chill factor, taking our burn box apart so we can clean pumps and get the stove heating the house. This is what I'm talking about when I say real life, real problems for real people. I was going to miss my hula hoop, which I was looking forward to. I've got it up to 10. I changed my hula hoop. I was excited. And instead, I had to make sure that the house didn't freeze and blow the pipes up. But I came in. I drank warm coffee, hot coffee. I covered up in the blanket on the couch for a little bit because I was freezing. And then I got up and did the hula hoop by myself so I didn't get to show it to anybody yeah. but myself right. okay well coaching this week you're coaching somebody what would you say two mm. things first little side note you gave us the sheet about ahas and you I just had an aha right now forgot about the yes. ahas damn it I'm, you just ahaed me <laughs> <laughs> so since my friends have been here there's things around the house and I'm showing them the house and, and they're like oh what's that what's that oh I haven't got to that yet I haven't done that yet I'm gonna do this I just haven't got to it. And I catch myself and I realized it last night when I had other people over, there was eight people here last night and they were asking me the same thing. And I'm like, how many times have I said today, I haven't got a chance to get to that yet. And there's really no reason I haven't got a chance to get to that. That's my ha ha is it? wait, I'm putting things off. Why? I so, love uh, that. That's my sidebar. And that was my coach part. If I'm coaching somebody today, if it's after week one and I'm trying to get them to stick around, I would tell them, trust the process. People know more than you, even though you don't want to admit it. And well, you have to I do. just freaking love you for that. You have no idea how many times I had to just say, just do it this week or trust the process or pretend to trust me until you do. And I'll tell you what one of the arguments were. And then I'm going to come to Amy on how she would coach somebody. I'll tell you what. It was a very good argument with a very intelligent client of mine who we have been spinning wheels for quite a sometime and I can only do so much I I can't do the work for you I can't as a personal trainer back in the day oh yeah if I was in your living room I'd be hmm, getting on your ass but this environment's a little bit different well this is what finally registered with her she said but I know myself so well I know what I need to do and I said how's that going for you I mean how, how's that going for you because why are we in a relationship why, why would you come to me when you've got everything figured out? Why don't you come to me for the part you can't figure out? That your ass keeps excusing or I'll put this, because you're just putting your wellness off. And the thing that I told her is how many broken records do you think people have wanted to smash because you keep saying the same thing over and over? And we don't necessarily hear ourselves, but you caught yourself saying it. It's the same thing as... You know, yeah, if you think you know some yourself so well and you know all that, like you said, one, how's that working for you? But two, then you got to do something different if you want it to be different. So get uncomfortable with the uncomfortable, get comfortable with the uncomfortable. It fucking sucks, but do it. Sucks. Fucking sucks, Captain America. <laughs> Amy, yes. coaching, sit down. What's up, Coach Amy? What, what, what are you going to tell me? What you I would tell him um, week one was rough. It will get better. Um, trust in yourself and trust what other people are telling you because not that they know more than you, but they've been through it. And, and it was rough for them too. They know where you've been and hopefully know where you're going. It's really, really hard to listen to people. I had a coach that told me I had to swim 17 days in a row because she really got sick and tired of me saying I hadn't gone outside and swam for a while. Hey guys, Coach Peggy here. It's a little bit early this morning. I was put in a 17 day challenge by one of my dearest mentors who said, get out of the house for 17 days and get over there and swim. So, see you guys, I'm breaking down the door of complacency, getting out of the house, getting over here this morning, see? Sun's just coming up over there. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Get out there. Or, oh, I'm so sick and tired of sitting at my desk working with all these palm trees and I live here. And she, pretty, she called me out. Worst thing I ever did is get a coach for a year. 
Because <laughs> I had to change. And it sucks when you pay for it, right? You're like, God, it's like really bad plastic surgery, you know? You get it all done, you're like, what am I going to bitch about? I paid for this. So that's how it feels when you get a coach. Because they're going to tell you the shit that you don't want to hear. If it's a good mm-hmm. coach, they're not going to tell you what you want to hear. You have enough best friends. They're going to tell you the shit you don't want to hear. And that's why it's truly hard. What you're so good at is repeating the same shit over and over. We're really good at it. If we weren't good at it, we wouldn't have fluctuating weight, relationships, organization. If you were good at being organized and opening your mail with a file system and not piling it up and moving it, and if you were good at it, it wouldn't keep happening. We wouldn't be talking about it four decades later. If you're somebody who doesn't fold your laundry and I'm like, ah, it's been in the dryer, I half-assed it, and you're still doing it, then you probably need some help figuring out what's up with organization. Well, one of the things I learned is I should get another pantry for my daycare kids (laughs) because you can't blame all that on me. (laughs) No, that's valid because it takes that tempting stuff. No, that's extremely valid to have have a shelf or square. Yeah, things that little kids like to eat. It's just not tempting, but you're teaching yeah, them how to eat just like you. Don't get me started on that book. I know, I know. But I, um, my my son-in-law does not like vegetables at all, and they're buying the house from us so that we'll still be able to come here when we retire. Um, so that matters so, on what's in the pantry. No, but in the refrigerator, when I took that picture, it was all this beef. And I told you I like beef and I do love beef, but I was like, there's like 18 pounds of beef in my refrigerator. She's going to think I'm a psychopath. Where's the beef? It's not my beef. (laughs) That's awesome. So Amy, what did you learn pre and post? Um, I learned I need to get rid of some of my stuff. Um, I do bake cakes for my kitty cats for their birthdays. They really love spice cake. Um, <laughs> and their birthday is about every other week or when's that? No, it's just that I missed Hefty's birthday in October because you know the pandemic and, and you go into buying the spice cake and you couldn't find it freaking anywhere. So you're ready for his birthday next year too? Yep, I'm ready for his birthday next year and well You're the best year, ever heard. Yeah. What the hell is she talking about? Ginger's birthday's in July, Hefty's is in October. And then of course, you know, there's always like my brother's like, you can make another apple pie for me. There's, you know? there's her acts of service, love language, pleasing everybody else when you have your own boundaries. You can tell him that you can make him one in June or July. Physical hunger and psychological hunger, you are going to eat those Oreos if you're not even really an Oreo person. You're going to eat the saltines if you're not really. we got to keep the tempting foods out. We become a snob. We go get them when we want. We have a little party. We get excited about it. We deal with what the scale's going to do. We deal with it when we say, you know. Wanted to it didn't wanted to have it didn't think about it. You have to deal with that. When we keep going into this week with the audit, some of the things I want you to continue to look for. Remember, if you can't say an ingredient on the back because it's two, three, four syllables long, it's man-made, it's gotta go. It's causing inflammation. It just is. Let's go to Costco or Sam's. Okay? We go to Costco or Sam's and we're walking up to the deli. Look at those plump little chickens. Aren't they amazing? Oh wow, look. Mm, let's get the biggest one. It's four ninety nine. Awesome. We're going to get it. Cheap. I want you to think about all those chemicals that you're putting in your body. What do they do with those? Big syringe. Pushing in the nitrates and the preservatives and the sodium. Oh, yeah. Because water, it looks really good. This is what, this is what you're doing. It's just like pumping in, in your veins, all that shit that's in the food. You might as well do this or shoot up. Because what happens? Just like what you're seeing in the dead chickens. Puffing it up, inflammation, joint pain, and gaining weight. Except you're a little bit more, worth more than $4.99. No pumping your veins with that crap this week. Okay? All right, let's go around the room. Amy, are you excited for this week? I know you're not feeling well. Let's go into this week. What are your thoughts? I'm thinking that I am excited. Um, I feel more encouraged. Um, even though you're trying to eat more vegetables um, because I used to eat tons and tons of vegetables. Christine, how are you feeling? How are you feeling after this week headed into next week? Coming strong? Beat. Going strong. Oh, man. That's right. I'm going to slam it. 
You're going to slam it. No excuses. The weather didn't stop you. Any of you guys, the weather's not stopping you. Walt, how are you feeling this week? What are you going to do? Fired up. Um, well, look, I, one week I get two nights, six hours sleep. So over six weeks, if I can do that one more day each week, I'll be sleeping like a baby. <laughs> you are. Good. You are. And one last thing on the sleep situation. Here I go yelling again. One last thing on the sleep situation. There are things that work for you that you don't even recognize work for you for sleep. Okay, Walt, you talked about the caffeine not after a certain time. We're talking about no screens after a certain time. You can put diffusers in your bedroom with lavender. You can try a silk pillowcase, an eye mask, earbuds. There's so many don't have carbs just before bed. We gotta start thinking on how to protect our sleep. It will propel you to wellness that much faster, especially as you get more active and you have an injury. We gotta sleep, guys. All right. Cheerio. 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 Bye. Hey, I'm Coach Peggy Wilms, and if you are interested in being a cast member on season two or would love to nominate somebody, go to www.peggywilms.com. You can also find information there to work with me or also to be a part of the Coach Peggy real-time groups. We're going to have groups then. What does that mean? It just means that you don't have to go transparent in public in real time, but we're going to treat you exactly the same in large group virtual settings. So go over and find out more about that. Also, hop on to Coach Peggy real-time community on Facebook because we are interacting with you and we want to hear your stories and you are going to want to be part of the family. So we will see you there.